This week's message, given by Joe Sikora at the Sakasana United Methodist Church, June 2nd, 2019. The message is our journey together, based on Exodus 40, 36-38, and Matthew 28, 18-20. The scripture reading uh, for today, Exodus chapter 40, verses 36-38. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. This is the word of God for the people of God. And the second reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you please join me in our opening prayer. Loving and gracious God, open our ears to hear what you want to say to us. Open our hearts to receive what you have for us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Good morning. I am Joe Sikora, one of the nine lay servants at Sukkasana United Methodist Church, and I am delighted to be bringing you this morning's message. There are a couple of reasons why a lay servant is doing today's message, and it also a reason why it was me who was chosen to accept this responsibility. Number one reason was that since Pastor Stephen was ordained two weeks ago, our team of lay servants felt it best that he be given a week off from preaching. And I was actually scheduled to preach last weekend. However, when the pastor and I reviewed the state of my sermon during that preceding week, we mutually agreed to postpone it for one week so I could prepare further. Thank you, Pastor Stephen, on very short notice for providing last week's message entitled, Rooted by the Streams of Living Water. And then he would take his well-deserved vacation break. However, the only problem with that strategy may have been the title, Living Water, combined with today's scripture, reading, and the video from Exodus portraying clouds, which foretold stormy weather. As we saw this week, the storms Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday were simply incredible, even a tornado nearby Stanhope. I don't know what kind of vacation you had this week, Pastor. (laughs) Uh, I will come back to the scripture from Exodus a little bit later. Another reason why I am delivering today's message on our journey together is that Annalisa, my wife, and I will soon be going on our own journey to a new homestead in Virginia. As many know, we have an ever-expanding number of grandchildren in Virginia and elsewhere, and we just wanted to be closer. As my reward, quote, for going on this journey, I agreed to present one more time before we leave town later this summer. First, a little bit of background to my story. Our family moved to Sukkasana, twin daughters Lisa, Sherry, and their mom in the spring of 1986, some 33 years ago. While the boxes were being moved into our home that day, 33 years ago, a woman from Sukkasana United Methodist Church showed up at our front door with a loaf of homemade bread and an invitation to join her for worship that following Sunday. The woman's name was Gail Wobb. We did go to church that Sunday, and I have been faithfully attending this church ever since. Some stories along the way. My first minister at Sukkasana United Methodist Church was Reverend Richard Bannock. Reverend Bannock was very cerebral, and what I remember most about him was his sermon when he was in such a deep state of prayer 
that he walked off the fishing dock into the water at a nearby fishing dock. This church was then richly, very richly blessed when Reverend Mary Lou Ballantyne was assigned as our pastor. It was two weeks ago that Linda Diffley gave such an outstanding sermon to all that Mary Lou accomplished during her 12-year tenure at Succasana. If anyone missed Linda's talk, please see it online. Succasana United Methodist Church has been one of the two founding churches for the Christian Outreach Program. It was during Mary Lou's early years she recognized the importance of this outreach ministry. She really helped expand the program. It is my guess that probably well over 200 youth and adults, many of you sitting in this room, have been in some way involved and many return year after year. Especially notable are the youth who've now become leaders in this program. I became very close with Mary Lou's kids, Elizabeth and Matthew, who now have kids of their own and her husband Kip. We can share many meaningful stories about our times together. Following Mary Lou, next was Reverend David Lemkul, who came to SUMC at a tough time for me personally and also for our church. Most meaningful to me during that time was a funeral service that was officiated by Reverend Lemkul for Mary Lou's passing with such a tremendous show of love and support from our church and the entire Conf Greater New Jersey Conference. Next, Pastor Joe Monahan not only made a tremendous difference in my life, but I believe also made a tremendous difference in the growth of our church. So many of the initiatives that we now take for granted were started during Joe's all too brief seven years as our pastor. Pastor Joe and Carrie Cruz developed a conference-wide training program and recruited many of the lay servants that are now in our midst. Pastor Joe married Annalise and myself and also officiated at my daughter Sherry's wedding. Pastor Joe was involved in the startup of many of the small groups within SUMC. Most notably, at least to me, was the men's study group that has now been meeting nearly every single Saturday morning for the past 11 years. From Richard Foster's celebration of discipline, study is considered to be one of the four inward disciplines to living a Christian life, the others being meditation, prayer, and fasting. Though Pastor Joe recruited the lay servants, Pastor Jewel really helped to develop us as a team. She taught us how to deliver better sermons. An interesting fact is that I actually met Jewel at COP when she was a youth attendee. I remember her testimony at an evening campfire when she declared that she wanted to become a minister. So I was just elated to learn when she would become Sukkasana's minister. Last and certainly not least is our beloved pastor, Stephen. There's not much that I can say about our pastor that has not been said about him over the past few weeks leading up to his ordination. I personally and believe that our church is so truly blessed to have this man and his family in our midst, especially during such a stressful time in our nation and our denomination. I believe that Pastor Stephen is such an embodiment of peace and love. I have learned much from his sermons and his studies. The pastors I have cited are just some of my heroes. There are also certain people within our congregation whom I've worshiped with and worked with over the years that are also my heroes. I have much more to share with each one of my heroes and hope to do so in the weeks ahead. One thing I did learn in presenting a sermon is to focus on only two to three points. I've also seen Pastor Stephen use acronyms to reinforce these points. Last week was H2O. Hopefully we all remember what that stands for. If not, I'll remind you shortly. Now, a brief quiz. I've listed seven terms on this slide, which are all related to one general subject. In person, hands-on, computer-based, just-in-time, workshop, seminar, and OJT. What does this refer to? Anybody? Larry? Training. training. OK. They're all terms that are used for training. So. Bottom one there, 
OJT. What does that stand for? On job training. Okay, that's exactly what I'm doing today up here by delivering this sermon. So God, please help me for the rest of this. There's another key term that OJT refers to, and if you remember nothing else from today's message, it also stands for Our Journey Together, which is also the title of today's sermon, Our Journey Together. Our, the O. Though obvious, our means that we are not in an individual journey, but we're doing it with others. The disciples always went out in pairs, if not more. Journey can mean all sorts of things beyond just physical travel from one place to another. For example, it can mean having a serious illness or an injury and maintaining the long road to recovery. Other examples can include graduations, new jobs, new careers, marriages. And the T, together, something that I, I need to be reminded about all the time is that we cannot do it alone. We do need support, but most importantly, before all else fails, we do need God as our partner. OJT. The Bible actually makes many references to journeys. I selected two for today's readings that really resonated with me. From Exodus, chapter 40, verse 36. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. The story of the Israelites in the desert after leaving Egypt is a good place to start a discussion on new journeys. They had been enslaved for 400 years, and now they were finally able to travel and start on a fresh time in their lives. The exciting part was that God was leading them every step of the way, and all they needed to do was follow the pillar of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Unfortunately, we don't always have a literal cloud to guide us, but as Christians, we can pray, read God's word, and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in the direction that God would direct. Our gospel reading from Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18, 19 today was, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This verse is from the final chapter, final paragraph of the final chapter in the Gospel of Matthew and is known as the Great Commission. As mentioned earlier, Pastor Stephen in his Rooted for Living water sermon last week used the chemical formula H2O. The H is referred to harmony and harvest while the O referred to outward. Among Jesus' final words to his disciples is to go. Jesus did not want his disciples to stay and keep their faith inward. And I believe that we are also called to spread the good news as best as we can. I believe that the United Methodist faith, and specifically Sukkasana United Methodist Church, does an especially good job of being outwardly focused. I'm also happy to announce an especially interesting and what promises to be a stimulating series of sermons that Pastor Stephen will be leading us on beginning next week. The June sermon series entitled Road Trip includes Hit the Road, U-Turn, Worth Stopping, and The Road Less Traveled. These are the titles of each one of these I'm sure we'll want to hear and reflect upon. It is sometimes very hard to go on journeys, especially when leaving behind friends, family, relationships, and especially my beloved church family. It would be much easier just to stay at home. But my brothers and sisters, remember our JT. May God bless us all on our journey together. Amen.